Hello, everyone. This is the Inner Voice Show, part of the Evolving Mind series in the Togetherness Media. I'm Dr. Fujian Zain, and I'm a psychotherapist and the founder of Awareness Integration Theory. This is a show about what matters most in our life, our minds, our thoughts, feelings, actions, relationships, and our fulfillment in this beautiful journey of life. In this show, I will share the tip of the week about our dualities in decision making. I will talk about how to handle your older parents when they're constantly fighting in the Ask Me section. And I am honored to bring you Dr. Don Meichenbaum. He is a distinguished professor emeritus from the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. And he is the research director of the Melissa Institute for Violence Prevention in Miami, Florida. We have an amazing conversation about resilience and hope in this time. I love to hear from you. So connect with me through my website, fujan.com, and follow my social media and message me with your comments and topics of interest. But first, here's the tip of the week. Hi, this is Dr. Fujan again, and this is the tip of the week. This week, I've been working with facing duality inside of us, which ends up paralyzing us toward any action. This has been very prevalent in the decision-making of whether someone wants to stay in their relationship or move on, whether one should stay at a job or leave it to another position, or if one should end a business partnership or not. So how do we make the best decision for us when each part of us wants and needs different outcomes? And what is the best decision? How do we come to an alignment and agreement between our separate parts? One of the biggest inner conflict is when the situation we're in is not ideal. If we stay in the relationship, we're not completely fulfilled. And if it, does, it just doesn't feel good enough or it feels not enough. If we let go of the current relationship for the hope of the ideal future relationship, we might lose what we have right now. So at times we just cling to what we have with a sense of resignation, victimization, while we yearn for the ideal relationship to just fall into our lap with a guarantee of giving us all that we want. Well, some people wait passively while they look eagerly out there. Some become depressed since they lose hope for having the current relationship work and lose hope for ever getting what they want. And some continue with the agony of vacillation between staying and leaving daily. So at times we enter a relationship, whether in a, it's a romantic relationship, intimate relationship, or business or work relationship with the most immediate need such as I'm lonely, so I wanna be in a relationship, or I need money, I need a job right now, um, or uh, this opportunity is just too good to pass up. Um, and after fulfilling the existing need, other needs that are necessary to be fulfilled now show up, such as I also um, want someone who is emotionally mature, or I need my autonomy, or um, other things that show up for us afterwards. People try to fulfill their other needs within the same structure of the same relationship. However, the relationship might have never been set up to fulfill all other needs. Hence, the duality of fulfilling all needs simultaneously begins. So what do we do? Let's take the following steps. One, observe your different needs. Observe them. And then two, write them down. What is your request? What is it that each part of you wants? Three, can you fulfill parts of your needs in this relationship? And what are they? Four, have you communicated to your partners about your needs? Or is it just that it's inside of you and you haven't shared anything? Five, is your partner capable of offering you a solution to fulfill the need within the structure of your current relationship or not? Six, is your need a current and appropriate adult need? Or is it a chi childhood unfulfilled need or is an unrealistic need? Seven, 
write the pros and cons of staying in the relationship. A, write the pros and cons of leaving the relationship. Now put two chairs in front of each other and assign staying to one chair and leaving to another. 10, sit on the staying chair position and um, talk about the rationale and all of your emotions for you and the need to stay. 11, sit on the leaving position chair, the other side, and talk about the rationale and all of your emotions and needs of why you need to leave. And then keep going back and forth until you come to some defined negotiation between the two parts. 13, then stand tall on top of both chairs and be a mediator between your two parts. 14, take your pros and cons sheet and to five other people that you really trust and you like their opinion. Ask their opinion about it. 15, commit to a decision and an action. 16, commit to a date and a time if you choose to leave. And 17, commit to a shift of total attitude if you are going to stay, to accept what is, enjoy what is, and take it on fully. So for more observational and integration skills, go to my book, Life Reset, the Awareness Integration Path to create the life that you want. Remember, in making decisions, listen and honor your needs from all parts of you. You are a whole person and any misdecision that you make is going to affect all of you. Thank you. Hello again, this is Dr. Fujan in the Ask Me segment. Um, someone in uh, my LinkedIn asked, how do I deal with my older parents who had a love and hate relationship? After so many years of marriage, they bicker and argue constantly and I am tired of it, what do I do? So, uh, many couples have gotten used to a particular way of communicating. And, you know, to others, it could be unhealthy, and even to them might be unhealthy, but it's a habitual construct that they've created for um, a type of a power struggle or to be able to handle a power struggle to keep their righteousness. And um, sometimes it's just habit. Sometimes it is actually the way two people have uh, figured out how to be intimate in their conversation, which um, it may look like it's weird to you but if they're not used to saying hi love hi honey and uh be, you know being able to give the words of intimacy sometimes they've gotten used to just connecting with each other with bickering and that bickering at the end it just gives them um a sense of connection and being together now, if they're getting angry at it and it's really upsetting them, you got to realize they have figured this communication out for so long and neither one of them either changed or with their own resilience and they just survived it and somehow has become the way they are. And they might not really need to change that way of communicating. But if um, it's annoying to you, then it might be your issue that is being, you know, you're being annoyed at that moment, or it's theirs. Another way of looking at it is also, would one or both of your elderly parents have gone through some sort of an um, organic chemical change and could be at this time suffering from one of the mental disorders, such as depression, anxiety, maybe it's the beginning of dementia or Alzheimer's or something that you might want to take them for treatment to their medical doctors, or even ask them to go to a, a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist and just make sure that they're doing well in all areas. If they're doing great in all areas of their life and it's just their relationship that is suffering, then it could be that it's just something that they've always done and they're continuing to do. But if they're also determined deteriorating in the other aspects of their life in relationships with you or other people in their um, they're suffering in kind of like um, the relationship that they have throughout the day with their daily function then I really will ask you to get them for go take them for evaluation 
if there's abuse involved, one is uh, doing controlling over finances or verbal abuse or even physical abuse, you do need to get involved immediately and make sure that they're both safe. If there's no abuse and there's really no harm happening, um, then you might just want to step out and stay out. Um, if there is a problem to be solved and they can't solve it because they just do the bickering and there are day-to-day -day matters that they actually have to take an action, maybe on those aspects you can get involved find out what the problem is, bring a better and a healthier uh, solution, problem-solving methods onto the table and support them in creating a better solution with whatever problem that is showing up for them in their life. If, if it's just the matter of their daily conversation that is just bickering, then my suggestion is butt out. Don't worry about it let them handle it the way they've been handling it so far. Sometimes it's just the personality glitch. Sometimes it's just, you know, they annoy each other just the way they are. Or they've gotten used to a particular way of communicating and that bickering continues. Now, there is a way that you could turn around and say, mom and dad, I want to, you know, spend some time with you and um, can you stop bickering while I'm here? And can we have a different type of a communication and kind of like avoid those uh, conversations and just kind of like um, refer to something else? You know, we do that a lot also with our ch young children. We um, distract them with some other conversation. So some of the times you could do that. Um, and at other times, distract yourself. Don't even let it be an issue for you is as if it is what it is i've heard it all year you know all of my life and um let them be and let them enjoy the way that they do it although you don't enjoy it so i know that um for many years our parents were disciplining us and sometimes there becomes a year that we try to discipline them <laughs> it doesn't work out very well they don't listen to us when we want to discipline them so um see how you can be useful. And if you think that you cannot be useful, then step out and let them be and accept them as who they are. They've handled it so far without you, they'll handle it again. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Fujian Zain and I'm a psychotherapist and a life coach. If you are experiencing anxiety, depression, loneliness, isolation, fear, fear of what's going on with all that's going on in the globe with the coronavirus, what's going to happen to you if you've lost your job and you have a lot of anxiety and you don't know what's going to happen to you and your family, if your kids are at home and you're not used to it and you have no idea how to handle them, if you're working from home and all the structures have changed and you don't really know how to concentrate and restructure and motivate yourself, I'm here for you. Call me and let's have online therapy for anyone who's in California and online coaching for anyone who's in the world. Go to my website, fujan.com, F-O-O-J-A-N.com, and let me be a support to you through online therapy and coaching. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you and being a support to you. <laughs>